Hello, everybody. Okay, there's a here's a portrait that I took in Wyoming. Okay, and I have a way that I can easily make this into what looks like a studio portrait done in a done in a studio. And it's really kind of fun to do. So let me show it to you. All right, we're going to take this photograph into Lightroom. I'm start starting in Lightroom, and we're going to Photoshop because you can't do this in Lightroom. This procedure I'm going to show you. All right, and Photoshop is here. And let me um, let me make this a little bit smaller there. Okay. Now, first thing we need to do is we want to select him. All right, all the way around. And you have selection tools. There are two of them here. One's called the quick selection tool and one's called the magic wand tool. If all of your tones in the picture are the exact same thing, okay, you could easily use the magic wand tool. But we don't have that here. There are lots of different darks and lights and midtones in this picture. So we're going to use the quick selection tool. And it's a nice tool to use. It's very accurate. It's even at more accurate than the, than the magic wand. And you just literally just start drawing, okay, on your subject that you want to select. Now I'm going to show you a couple little things where I made a mistake uh, right here. See that little mistake there, right here? Well, you just go along it, just click on it and it goes back. Now, what you want to do before you do anything else, all right, is you want to look along the edges and make sure, okay, that those selection lines, oops, see, I missed another one here. There, see, that's got to be right on the edge. And this tool is very accurate. Just play around with it, learn to use it. All right, we have him nicely selected now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to select and we're going to say inverse. When you say inverse, what it does is it now it will it will no longer select him, but it will select everything around him. The background, in other words. So here. Now you can see that the line is like this, okay, and it's selecting the background. He is not selected any longer, the background is. Once you have that selected, <clears throat> you go to the gradient tool. You go down here, down this list, it tells you all the names. Here's the one for the gradient tool. And it's a real neat tool to use. It's fun to use, it's, and it's easy to use. So we have, a neat, we have the gradient tool now, and up here, have all these different gradients. Well, we always want to use for this technique, the first one. All right, so you just click it, that's all. And now, whoops, okay, now you can draw like that. And it gives you this studio look, look. And if you use, if you use this one little, this little one here called the radial gradient, and it's labeled radial gradient. And you start there and you pull down. It gives you this. Well, let's do, let's, uh, and you can reverse it. See, there's a little thing here that says reverse. So you could go like this and you pull down and it gives you that. And that's a pretty good mimic of, of a studio portrait. But let's add some color to it. Okay, but rather than just the black and white. All right, you can do that if you come over here to the to the color boxes all right and what you want to do is you always want to have black in the back all right so you just click this little arrow here and it puts the black in the background now all right and you have white okay in the foreground but we want to put some color in here so if you click right on the boxes like that you get a color picker and I think I would like to pick a little bit, something maybe like almost a golden, you know? Put some gold behind him, maybe. Um, and you have your choice. You can, you can make it very gold and see it's up here, it shows you what it's gonna look like, or you can move it over to it's a little gold <laughs> like that. I think I'm gonna go with that. All right, so what you want to do when you say okay, is you check here and make sure 
okay, that <clears throat> that your foreground box is gold and your background box is black. And then you can just draw your lines again. All right, and you can go like that. And it gives you different colors. But you know what? Let's do this, try this one, okay, with the radial. That's the one I think I would use for this portrait. You just go like that. And you get this, where you could say, here's a little box that says reverse. You can reverse it. So that you have more black around him. And you get that. And that's where I think I would probably finish. Look, so you can keep doing it. And see where you like it. I think I like it right about between his eyes. No, nope, a little bit over there. That would be a finished portrait. And you get rid of the dotted lines, the selection lines, by just saying select inverse. Now you could, we're not going to do it here, okay, but just to show you, okay, you could click on this box here and you could pick any color you want it to create that light behind them. You could make it red or blue or green or yellow or whatever you want. But I thought, okay, gold, okay, would be a nice color for him there. And uh, have fun with that one because that one, okay, can be used for a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be used just for portraits. You could have a statue that you took a picture of, okay, in a uh, museum. And if you just select it, and then inverse it, use the same procedures. You can make a studio portrait around that, uh, that, that statue that you took in the museum. Uh, try it with other things as well. I've tried it with statues, it works beautifully. And I've tried it okay with uh, portraits and it works beautifully. So again, play around with it, have fun with it. Thanks again, see you next time.